The screencast is a, sort of an extension of the screencast on longest increasing subsequence problem. In this one, this is the longest common subsequence problem. So now we're given two sequences, and what we want to do is find the common subsequence between the two sequences. So what that means is that we want some sequence, which is, we'll denote by Z, that, re, that is a subsequence of both of the sequences that we start with, X and Y. So easiest way to talk about this, think about it, is let's give an example. For our sequences, we'll um, let character strings stand in for them. So one sequence will be A, C, B, A, E, D, and the other will be Y, Y will be equal to A, B, C, A, D, F. And now again, what we want is the longest common subsequence, maximum like one. So you can see that for this particular problem, uh, because the sequences are short, we can just look at it and we can see that uh, the longest common subsequence is going to be A, C, A, D. A's match, these A's matches, then these C's match, those A's match, and then these D's match. With longer sequences, obviously, uh, we're going to need some help in terms of trying to find the longest common subsequence, and dynamic programming is going to help. Um, provide that help. So the first thing in trying to solve a dynamic programming problem is trying to come up with a recurrence relation, which means you need to figure out how um, the objective, the thing you're trying to maximize or minimize, how that can be related um, in terms of optimal substructure to smaller problems. So here our problem involves two sequences and we'll denote the length of the longest common subsequence to be with this notation, L sub LCS, and we'll just put the sequences in. And this is going to denote the length. So that's what we're trying to optimize, is to get that length as long as possible. And to make it easy to specify the problem size, what we're going to do is we're just going to specify, we're going to start out and we'll have our X and Y sequences, and then we'll just denote by an integer the first I characters, of the first sequence, and then by an integer j, the first j characters of the second sequence. So then we can use some shorthand, which will be much easier notation to use, uh, the length uh, sub longest common subsequence of i and j. So now the question is, how do we develop a recurrence relation for that? And remember, so what we're trying to do is discover the optimal substructure. So how does a solution to the problem with i for i and j for that those lengths of the sequence sequences how is that contained within it a solution to smaller subproblems in other words how basically turning that around how can you get from small solutions to smaller subproblems to the solution to the big problem so give that some thought before you uh, pause the video for a while and think about it before we go on to the next slide if you haven't been doing dynamic programming problems for a while, this can be pretty challenging. So if you got stuck um, trying to develop the recurrence relation, uh, don't feel bad about it. Just uh, you'll see how things sort of work here in these more complicated examples, and eventually you'll get the hang of dynamic programming. So here's an example we're going to deal with. We're going to let x be equal to this sequence of characters, represents a DNA sequence, and this y represents another DNA sequence very short ones. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple cases. So let's suppose that the subsequences we're going to deal with are ATC from the first, from X and GAC from Y. So then what we're trying to find is the longest common subsequence of that. And by inspection you can see that that's just going to be AC. And so the length of the longest common subsequence of these two is going to be 2. Now, since the C last letter of the strings match, so you want to break this into cases, the last letters match, so C is the last letter of both. So then, since this has length 2, then you must know that the length of the longest common subsequence of AT and GA must be equal to 1. Why is that? Because suppose it was, if it were smaller, then there's no way that the length of this sequence could be 2. 
And if it were bigger than 1, then the length of the longest common subsequence of this would be bigger than 2. So you've got to have this relationship if the last characters match. Namely, that there's a difference of 1 between the 2. And that makes sense. If the last two characters match, then you should be able to increase the length of the subsequence by 1 from taking from the longest common subsequence of the sequences with, without those last characters. The second case is if the last letter, two letters do not match. So the last letter of X here is G, the last letter of Y is C. So those don't match. Again, the longest common subsequence for those two is AC, and so the length of the longest common subsequence is equal to 2. Now, so because we know it's AC, we can sort of look around and see what happens. Suppose that the subsequence of Y is one character smaller. Okay, so we're going to lop off this C. Then the longest common subsequence of that pair is just 1. It's only A. However, if we knock off the last character of X, the G, then we can see that, in fact, the longest common subsequence is still 2, and it's AC. So if you think about this for a while, what it means is you can find the longest common subsequence of a pair here, of the first four characters of X and the first three characters of Y, if the last characters don't match, then the longest common subsequence must either be in the one character smaller for Y pair or the one character small, smaller for X pair. So the point is, if the last two characters don't match, then the longest common subsequence must be the same as the max of the longest common subsequence of the pairs, where one string is smaller than by one. So in this case, we look at this pair taking the last character off the y part and this pair taking the last character off the x part and we'd see that the biggest one is 2. So that must be where the longest common subsequence for the bigger problem comes from. It must come from here and because the last two characters match. So once you've done all that work, now it's pretty easy to see what the recurrence relation is. So the longest common subsequence, the length of it, of i and j, is equal to, if there's a match, so if xi is equal to yj, then it's the longest common subsequence of i minus 1 and j minus 1 plus 1. In other words, take the class character off both sequences if there's a match, and then add 1 because there's a match. Or it's just the max of taking the character off the x sequence versus taking the character off the y sequence, seeing which one of those is bigger. And that will give it to you. And this signifies that the last characters don't match. So now, take a few minutes and try to fill in the ta this table to find the length of the longest common subsequence. Notice how we've initialized it to get the base case. Um, so we've got a base case here where a, this string has no characters. Okay, And so obviously... There's no common characters at all, so these are all zeros. Uh, this column represents when the top string doesn't have any characters in it, so all these are obviously zero. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to start here, follow using our recurrence relation, fill in here, etc., and just go across, go across, go across, go across. Similarly to how you do knapsack, uh, but here the recurrence relation is actually quite a bit simpler. So again, pause the video and then restart it once you've tried to fill in the num some of the entry cells in the table. So let's try to fill in some of these. So if we have uh, the first characters, G and A, they don't match. So we take the max of the zero, the max of the, in the other zero, and we get zero. Again, we're here. In this case, now the G matches with the G, so we get a match. So we're going to add 1 to that 0. And so now, so we'll fill that in with 1. Now, these two characters don't match. So we'll just use the 1. These two characters, A does not match with G, so we'll just fill in the 1. 
Um, so now G matches with the G, so we get a 1 down from the diagonal. And finally, T doesn't match with G, so we just use the max of 0 and 1, and we get another 1. So basically, these are all 1s filled in across. So that should give you some idea. Uh, see if you can fill in the rest of the table before you go on to the next slide. So here's the final result. Um, you can see where we left off. We got all ones here. Uh, let's look at a couple places where things change. We have a two here. Why is that? Because we have an A matched with an A. So this one gets increased by one and we get a two. How about this two? This two, there's no match between the G and the A. So we take the max of this one and this two and we get the two, etc. And so that fills in the table. And now what we need to do is try to find what the actual longest common subsequence is. We know that it's of length 3, but we want to know what it is. So we can find the longest common subsequence by tracing back. So we've got 3 here, and we ask, so we'll have a loop, and we'll set uh, indices to the relative sizes of these two sequences. And then we'll look here and we'll say, well, where did the 3 come from? Well, it's no, there's no match. And we look to see which the max of these two is. And so the match is over here. So we know that there was no match. And we moved over to this position. So we know we've moved uh, left in the table to go back. Or we made a right move in coming down the table. So we still haven't matched anything yet. Again, the 3 comes from over here. Now, finally, this 3 comes from this 2. So we know there's a match. So we can store the A's. Okay, that'll tell us. And we we'll probably want to store them in a stack because we're finding them backwards. Um, but in, we can handle that however you want in your code. So we're back to here. This 2 came from the 1 because, again, there's a match. So now we know there's C is a match. We come back to this 1. And the 1, where did the 1 come from? Well, it either came from here or here. So depending on how you write your code, you could pick either this one or this slide. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much in our course about which way you choose. We'll just find one common subsequence. But let's suppose that you picked this way. It came up here. Then you look, the G's match. So you come back here. So then the final thing that you, you have is a G. And you're back up to here. And then you go back to the start. Similarly, in this way, you if you went this way, you'd get the, here, and then the A's would match. So what you end up with is are two answers. Uh, your code would just produce one of these two. But um, one possible answer is this one, where these A's matches, then this, these C matches, and then this A's match. And the other one is this. These A's match, the C's match and then the G's match. So those are two possibilities, and you can pick them both up um, by tracing back. Uh, again, normally all you do is pick one of these and, and print that out or save it somewhere. Here's some pseudocode. I'm not going to spend much time on it. Um, you should just go uh, look at the table and make sure this all makes sense to you. All we did here was initialize the table. So we have a base case. Then we have these nested loops uh, where we're looping over the rows and inside we loop over the columns more quickly if there's a match we do the obvious incremental thing incrementing using the recurrence relation if there's no match then we just look for the max of these two so obviously filling in the table has complexity the number of cells the amount of work in each cell is constant so it's n times m um, this is going to be o of n squared if the sequences are roughly the same size tracing back you should convince yourself that tracing back is just going to be big O of n plus m, which means the overall complexity is going to be big O of n squared. So hopefully this gives you some feel for how you do problems where there's more than one parameter that you need to, you, to specify to get the problem size. And to, the size of smaller problems and their relationship to bigger problems when there's more than uh, one index. 
This hike harkens back to the robot coin collecting problem, but here things are a little bit more complex in trying to determine what the recurrence relation is actually going to look like.